What's up world, Baratunde Day here. Day like 17 without a haircut, gonna push it with this uh, social distancing. I've been experimenting with a live streaming show, live on lockdown. And on Sunday when we taped, we unexpectedly had a guest from Bergamo, Italy. His name is David Orban. He's a part of my text network, 202-894-8844. Listen to what he has to say, it's very important. Picture for us of what things are like in the town, I'm gonna hand you the mic, I'm gonna hand you the mic. Um, yeah, so uh, I commute between New York and uh, Italy, and I have a home here, uh, east of Milan, where Bergamo is. Um, if you uh, are in a restaurant in New York and you look at the, the bottle on your table, Pellegrino, that's my tap water, right? So uh, it's uh, very nice and uh, a beautiful place, except that it happens to be the second largest epicenter of the infection outside of China. And uh, uh, what people have been afraid of, of the health care system being overrun by uh, everybody being sick is what is happening here so that uh, there are not enough uh, intensive care uh, beds. And uh, whether you have the coronavirus or you have a stroke, uh, there is a competition for who gets uh, cured. And uh, the, uh, the doctors have to decide if you have a good chance of surviving, then you get the uh, intensive care. If not, you're gonna die. And uh, so that is why it is so important uh, to make sure that as few people as possible get sick. Uh, thank you for sharing that. And I think for me, it, it sounds like what we've been reading is true. I had seen some stories about that what it means for the medical system to be overwhelmed. Uh, and that is it, you know, you have to start denying services to folks who you think are not gonna make it. So it sounds like a, like a war type situation, uh, which is not very good. Do you have any sense of how long you're going to be in this kind of hold pattern in terms of staying, staying in your home? In your, how, are you, how are you accessing how are you services, right services right now? So um, uh, the government, uh, uh, imposed uh, lockdown about uh, 10 days ago, uh, maybe a little less, and it should officially last for another 10 days, but it is practically sure that they will renew the, uh, the measures. Uh, because what you have to look at is what is called the growth ratio. So uh, whether the number of new cases today is lower than the new cases yesterday, and you have to understand that if that keeps going down, it's not that you are done. You are just halfway through because previously cases were exploding exponentially. Now cases are trending to stop, but it will still take a long time. So if the growth ratio gets small enough in another 10 days, there will be another month of full lockdown. Otherwise, there's gonna be a full uh, explosion again of, of, of cases. And uh, the way you ask me, we get uh, services is that uh, uh, one person from each family can go grocery shopping and they have to actually fill in a piece of paper to show uh, to, the, to the roadblocks. There are police and military roadblocks. And if you are on the street uh, without uh, a good reason, uh, you are fined and theoretically you can be jailed. In practice, you are already jailed in your home, so it doesn't matter. But uh, it's, it's uh, al already more than 20,000 fines have been, <laughs> have been issued all over Italy because of people uh, going around that they, they shouldn't. But in this area, things are serious enough so that uh, we were on my terrace um, after lunch and we were telling each other that everything was completely silent. No cars, no children playing, 
uh, you could hear the birds chirping and from time to time a siren uh, uh, more, more or less distant. So it's, it's definitely eerie, the contrast between uh, nature and the mountains and the beautiful Italian landscape and the fact that you know that everybody's holed up in their homes and, and uh, they are rightly afraid as well as prohibited from leaving. Yo, um, all right, thank you. Thank you for sharing all that. I think it's, there's a juxtaposition of like what you're describing, which first of all mirrors exactly what we're seeing in press reports and Instagram and Twitter. Uh, and so I'm just, I guess I'm glad to know that this is real, but I'm sad to know that this is real. Um, and it's, it sounds very eerie. Um, and I think for those of us who are kind of behind the curve, kind of in a wave that's yet to land, sort of hoping it doesn't land here as hard, but quantitatively expecting that it will um, is, uh, is what I'm yeah, I, 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 I think if I may, Bertunde, that realism please, is please. more important than hope. Uh, the yeah. U.S. Yeah. runs the risk of being hit even harder because of the delay of the measures. The fact that schools are not being closed, the fact that people who should stay home don't stay home because they are afraid of losing their jobs, so they go to work even if they are sick, is a premise for infections that are going to explode exactly because there is a delay of one or two weeks after getting the virus and manifesting the symptoms. And, and every day that extreme measures are imposed uh, increases the number of sick people who are running the risk of dying. And the difference of the um, fatality rate uh, between what is in uh, South Korea, for example, and what uh, we are seeing in, in Italy, and what is going to be in the U.S. is how quickly the measures have been put in place. So hoping is not going to make it. Everybody individually should self-impose the measures. If the government is not smart enough to, to, to tell people what they should do, the smart people should do it by themselves don't mix up with others don't go to the restaurants don't go to the pubs don't go to concerts 500 people or more is ridiculous five people or more shouldn't happen cool uh that's great sorry i am uh i'm hearing you and i'm also updating the uh resources in the Google Doc. So let me just uh, switch gears. This is what happens when you go live. Uh, thank you, David. I don't uh, you know, have anything else I wanna ask of you at this moment. If there are people in the chat you know, who have logged in, first of all, if you've just joined, welcome. This is Live on Lockdown, a test show with Baritone Day Thurston, uh, episode triple zero and uh, who I've invited into the audience slash participation to the community, I guess, uh, are the people from my Patreon and the people who let me into their phones on a regular basis through the community text thing. We have just heard from David Orban, who is in Bergamo, Italy, uh, where he has been 10 days on lockdown, expecting another 10, and anticipates things might go beyond. And you know the curve that he's on uh, improvise here we're going mobile so uh you know we got like time and we got this sort of caseload and it sounds like you know we're hoping that he's kind of flattening out where he's at um the u.s is probably down here somewhere and you still have all this time to tend to even as you're coming up the back side of that curve in terms of caseload and the medical, the economic, and the social impact of what that does to a society. Um, and again, if you're just joining, I'm trying to recap, also making sure I heard correctly. Uh, but what David in, in Bergamo is saying as well is that the U.S. might actually get hit harder uh, because we have not taken the aggressive measures. You know, Italy did quarantine the Lombardy region in the north first. Um, I think that was a week ago. 
we haven't done any such thing with it.